That's why Shlomo HaMelech says, there are many, many machshavot, there are many ideas that a person has, many ways that he thinks he's going to get himself out, get himself out of his trouble. He's going to make certain sins, but he's going to have an excuse. When he gets up to Shamaim, Shlomo HaMelech says, all of those ideas that you have of how you're going to fool the system, maybe it's going to work in this world with people. It's not going to work with Hashem. The Midrash Ma'am Loez in Parashat Vayelech, in the English version, it's page 311, says there's a hidden secret that Shlomo HaMelech has in this verse. When he says, Ve'etzat Hashem itakum, that the uh, counsel of Hashem, meaning that Hashem is going to decide what's going to be the outcome of everything. When it says the word he, he meaning it, it stands for the acronym of three different people. He for Hillel, Hillel is a kin. Yud for Yosef at Sadiq. And Aleph for Elazar, Rabbi Elazar. Rabbi Elazar ben Hasima. Why these three people? Because a person is going to go up to Shamaim. And a Kadosh Baruch Hu is going to ask him, how come you didn't learn Torah? You knew everything about the sports teams. You knew the salary caps. You knew what coach they had in every year that they won the championship. You knew how many people they could fit in the stadium when they played at home versus when they played somewhere else. You knew all types of useless information. But my Torah, somebody asked you, well, can I, am I allowed or not allowed to do such and such on Shabbat? You didn't know. How come? No, Hashem, listen, I was so poor. I was always working. And you know, when you're working, you're not going to be able to learn Torah. Oh, you're poor. Hillel Zaken had enough money every day to go give food, half a coin, one lira, to give to his family so they could eat and not starve to death, and the other half to give it to the Bet Midrash so he could learn Torah. That's all he had. And when he didn't have that, he climbed on the roof of the Bet Midrash of Shmaya Naftalion just to listen because he couldn't enter. They wouldn't let him in. So he listened through the glass roof of the Bet Midrash to listen to his rabbis say the Torah and put his life in danger and he actually froze until Shmaya Naftalion saw him on the roof the next morning covered by snow and they violated Shabbat to bring him back to life. They violated Shabbat. They lit a fire. They violated Shabbat to bring him back to life. Were you poorer than Hillel as a Ken? Oh, not so much. You're making 500 bucks a week. You're making 1,000 a week. So you weren't that poor then. Business wasn't that... Uh... No, so another guy's going to say, yeah, but Hashem, come on. How could I not sin? How could I not sin? I had so much money. I had so much money. You know, I had to take care of the houses. And you gave me, you blessed me, Hashem. It's not my fault you blessed me. I had all these houses. I had, you know, real estate. I had my company. I sold it. And this guy bought it. And then he... Failed, so I bought it back to him. All this stuff takes a lot of time. I I couldn't learn Torah. Kadosh Baruch Hu says, Were you richer than Rabbi Eliezer ben Hasima, who his father was so rich he left him an inheritance of a thousand cities? A thousand cities was his inheritance. Cities. We're talking about a thousand shuls. A thousand cities. Were you richer than him? Somebody like that, even Bill Gates wouldn't be enough to work for him. Oh, he weren't so rich. But he still became a Tamil Chacham. How much of a Tamil Chacham? He's mentioned in the Gemara, that means he was so, so wise and so holy, he was able to revive the dead. So you weren't in this level. But he had more money than you, though. And then somebody said, yeah, but Hashem, listen, I get it. I didn't study that much, but I did enough. I did enough, but... Uh, this thing about wasting seed, this thing about uh, girls, boyfriend, or it's not for me, right? It's not for this generation, right? Shem says, yeah, it's a different generation. You have a different section for you. Hold on a second. Let me finish with the guy with the Torah. He comes to Akadosh who says, but Hashem, how come? How come this generation, the girls walking around practically naked in the streets? How could I not sin? I was such a handsome boy. Every girl wanted to give me a number. Without any commitment. Hashem, it's not my fault. HaKadosh Baruch is going to tell you, were you more handsome than Yosef at Sadiq? Yosef at Sadiq was so beautiful that his skin was shining. Shining. Now, we're not going to have any kind of understanding of what that means. 
But you will have an understanding of this. When Potiphar's wife, which was one of the four most beautiful women that ever lived, by the way. She wasn't some uh, woman that had three heads and that's why she wanted Yosef. She herself was one of the most beautiful women that ever lived. When Potiphar's wife was trying to get Yosef to be with her and he rejected her, she got into a depression. And when her friends saw her depressed, she says, what are you so depressed about? She said, no, Yosef doesn't want to be with me. She says, some slave doesn't want to be with you and you're upset? You get whatever you want. You're a beautiful woman. He says, if you saw yourself, you wouldn't say the same thing. So you don't want to see yourself. Okay, show us yourself. Okay, come to my house. Come to my house. And come to the kitchen. Pretend like, you know, obviously we can't tell everybody. Come to the kitchen. Be with me in the kitchen. And I'll show you yourself. So all the girlfriends came over. That a challah party. I'm kidding. My jokes are not that good, though. Only some people get them. Anyway, they were cutting. They were cutting the. Uh, they were cutting the uh, um, lemons. Each one was cutting lemons, oranges. You're know, making salad, all types of things. Whatever you do with lemons. Don't I know? I don't like. I don't like salads, guys. Leave me alone. So it's a different section. Different. Well, I didn't get to it yet. So they were cutting lemons. They were cutting oranges, and Potiphar's wife says, "Okay." Yosef! The master's wife calls you, you have to come. Right? Even You're not going to be with her, but she calls you, you have to come. You can't disobey in front of people. So Yosef passes by the room. The women saw Yosef. They were so enamored by his beauty, they continued cutting as he's passing by. When he left, they realized they cut off their own fingers. Off, completely. That's how beautiful he was. His beauty numbed their pain. That's how beautiful he was. You're more beautiful than that. I think he got more numbers than you. But he didn't sin. He didn't sin. So that's the secret that we see from Shlomo HaMelech and our sages. Where all of these ideas and excuses that a person has of why he can fool the system, it's not relevant to this generation, and all this other nonsense, there's already verses in the Torah that tell us otherwise. There's nothing new under the sun, whether the generation has iPhones and internet or otherwise.